Well, Senior Wiley, I take it you've just left the courtroom to yeah. see Judge Richard O'Krent. And uh, I cut the tail end of that. Tell us what happened. Let's get you in front of the door. Um, Judge o O'Krent said that there is no right to a jury trial. Um, in a family law matter? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Though whether this is not strictly a family law matter, and uh, anyone can go and read the law for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, Let's get you in front of the door. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, not sure if this is allowed or not inside the courtroom. Um, anyone can read the law for, for themselves. It is obvious. It is in English, as he said. Um, and the law says that, first of all, that it only prohibits matters under a certain chapter from being heard um, by a jury. This is not a matter under chapter um, 26. This is a, a matter of um, contempt and of vacating which is governed by civil rules of the court. It's not a family law issue, even though it takes place within the context of family law. Um, again, the law is specific. Only those matters under 26 are prohibited from having a jury trial. Um, even that on itself is a violation of our state constitution. Article one, section, um, I'm gonna get this wrong. It's in article one, mm -hmm. um, which says that the, uh, right to trial by jur jury is inviolate, right? Cannot be violated. A judge under the Constitution has no authority to set that aside, as they're doing here. Um, so explain to us... And what even the legislature has no authority to set it aside. They can only tr decide the manner and the means in which that right to jury trial is exercised. So explain to us that the, the, so that the viewers can understand your argument being that this is not a pure family law matter. Um... <clears throat> Okay, so something may start as a family law matter. What is a family law matter? Uh, a matter of parentage, a matter of custody, a matter of visitation, right? Those are family law matters. Um, when you go to court for contempt, which is saying the other party is in violation of a court order, that does not follow uh, those rules within chapter 26. That follows the civil rules of the state of Washington, right? Civil law, civil rules. So it's not a family court matter. When you say that something is in error, um, vacating a void judgment is not a simple family law matter, right? Any judgment, criminal, civil, uh, may be vacated because things happen. Uh, so what about the catch-all? So I noticed that he, he dinged you on the, the year, the 60B, uh, you have 60B, right? Yeah. And so um, he dinged you on the one year thing, but of course there's any other reason, you know, there, there's which a catch-all section clause. 11, which is yeah. not limited by one year. Oh, right. So, so what was your response to that? Um, you know, people can go online, but my case did not rest on sections one through three. I had in there that additionally, uh, in addition to where my case was, that there was void judgment, which is obvious. Um, a commissioner recused himself and then jumped in when I was running for office to make a decision against me. And other orders are based on that commissioner's order. Um, that doesn't follow under sections one, two, three. There is no one year time limit. A void judgment is void. Um, it's made by a person who is in effect, not a judge or commissioner. Uh, it means that anyone, your neighbor can put on a robe, call themselves a judge, and it's a valid um, order in the eyes of the state of Washington. This is in effect what it's saying, which is absolutely not true. Um, so yeah, there are certain orders the Court, and these are court rules, by the way, these are not laws of the legislature. These are rules that the court has made for itself saying that, oh, okay, if the, the decision was wrong for these reasons, uh, you only have a year or, you know, the fact that it was wrong stays in forever. Um, but there's no limit on fraud, right? If someone lies to get a verdict, if you get new evidence, a year later, so that's, five that, years later, so that's what I hear you saying as new evidence. I hear you saying that. Let's, yeah. yeah. So tell us, because that new evidence, of course, can vitiate the one-year rule under Rule 60B. So what's the new evidence? Um, so this was a matter involving CPS. Mm -hmm. And because of the, the short notice of a hearing before a commissioner, uh, I couldn't subpoena the witnesses to say what was really going on, right? This, in effect, became a he said, she said matter. And everybody in the public knows how that works out in our family courts here. Um, certain people, certain demographics are pre preferred, and if you don't have a really good case, you're going to lose if you're not in the right demographic in court. Um, 
you know, and surprise, surprise, that's what happened again. Um, so bringing in witnesses, which is something you can easily do with a subpoena during a trial, it's another reason to invoke your jury trial right, um, wasn't able to do that. So I got records, official records from CPS interviews stating what really happened. Um, in order to get those records, the case has to first close. So there's a long delay. And then after that, there's another six months or so while they process it. It's nearly impossible to get those records within one year. So if your case involves fraud that a CPS report uncovers, you're and, not going to get it. And if you brought it early, they would say you don't have sufficient evidence. If I brought it early, I wouldn't have witness testimony to back it up. It would be my word, right, against someone else's. He said, she said. Gotcha. So you're going to ask him to reconsider pointing out those factors or uh, what's yes. your... Yeah, so you got that and you reconsider. I guess so you got uh, a month to do that. And then after that, if he dings you there, then you got to take your appeal and go from there. Yeah, the issue with appeal is that um, in a 2017 decision, the Court of Appeals said that uh, in family law, the Constitution, international treaties, the state constitution, and state law do not apply. It's strictly up to discretion of the judge. You can look that up in Wiley 2017. Um, so there's not really a good chance there. Um, wow. I'm, wow. Yep. And in 2020, because this is a matter of a constitutional right being violated, I took this straight to the Supreme Court with a petition of mandamus. Mm -hmm. And after 30 days, the clerk of the court unfiled my petition. They unfiled the mandamus request? Hmm? They unfiled the mandamus request? Yes. Did they give you a rationale? Um, they said it looked like a uh, appeal and that I had 30 days to do that. Of course, it was already after the 30 days when they unfiled it. That's interesting. So, yeah, so your mandamus was... Not in direct response. I don't I have to look up the time limits on a mandamus or whatever, but it's interesting. Huh. Wow. Well, um, well, it wasn't the time limit on okay. the mandamus, which uh -huh. is 30 days, and yeah. I met that. Right. Okay. But they unfiled it after 30 days and said it could be refiled as an appeal. But of course, I was already past the 30 days for an appeal. Well, that should have stayed. <laughs> but it was, in fact, a mandamus. I was yeah. citing here is a constitutional right. I'm asking uh -huh. that you enforce the constitutional right. procedure and the clerk unfiled it. So I didn't get a hearing or anything. You know, the statement by opposing counsel in there that, oh, he, he had time to, to do this, to take Judge Lucas's order up to the higher court. Well, I did. Right. Right. And they simply, oh, well, we'll select that out. And again, I believe this is because I was a, a political candidate who was running on the issue of court reform. In integrity, yeah. Yeah, it's a conflict of interest. They, um, you know, I was saying in qualified immunity, right? And so I'm getting decisions here instead of by a proper jury, by a bunch of people who don't want to lose their qualified immunity, right? And then they're saying, oh, we're not biased. We have no personal interest in the outcome. Well, thanks again. I wish yeah. you the best of luck there, you. indeed.